All right, I got something really fun for you here today. One of the coolest parts about writing my book has been seeing people get inspired from it. And a few weeks ago, someone sent me a message on Instagram and said, Hey chef, thank you so much for writing about unripe sunflowers. I took that inspiration and harvested something else while that was unripe and I think you'll like it. I'm paraphrasing a little bit. What I have here is one of the coolest wild edibles that I have eaten yet. And as you can see, it is a legume. Some of you may know what it is, but basically this is a wild legume that you can harvest and eat a little bit like fava beans. Uh, a lot of it like fava beans, actually. So what these are, these are the pods of the Kentucky coffee tree, or Gymnocladus diochus for uh, botany nerds. And what I have here are two different stages. Uh, most of you know I work a lot with plants that are in different stages of ripeness because it means different things. Uh, it gives different possibilities in the kitchen. When most people think about Kentucky coffee tree, if they have heard of it at all, they're going to be thinking about this. So this is the mature Kentucky coffee tree pod, and this is what you're going to see on the ground. Typically, they're going to come off the ground when a wind blows them off in late spring. Uh, sometimes I can get them when the snow is still on the ground, and they're a giant leguminous pod, and they hang very high on the tree, which is kind of by design because these were basically food for dinosaurs, food for uh, things like mastodons, giant herbivores that would eat food from the top of a tree. And if you open up one of these pods, what you're going to get is a couple little seeds. And these things have a, sh a shell that is like, I don't know, if black walnut shells are like steel, Kentucky coffee bean shells are like adamantium. These things are incredibly hard to crack. You're gonna have to crack them one at a time in a mortar and pestle. Uh, the little nut, it kind of tastes like a peanut crossed with a cashew, a little bit milder. Uh, the little nut, bean, whatever you wanna call it inside is, it's good, but it takes a lot of work to get that, that little thing out of the shell and you gotta do it one at a time. It takes a long time. I harvested about 80 pods from a single tree and they are still sitting in the burlap sack where I put them because it is a lot of labor. But here is the really cool thing. If you harvest the pods when they are young and green, very similar to other legumes, think shelling beans and things like that, the shell has not yet formed. So I'm going to cut open a pod just to show you one of the green ones. And uh, this is, uh, I was harvesting these kind of in the last week of August here, but you'll need a knife and then you can pry that shell open and look at this. Look at these beautiful magic beans. It's exactly what I've been telling people like Jack and the Giant Beanstalk. Like if I thought about magic beans, what they would look like, this has got to be, th this is right at the top of the list. And just look at these things. They are massive. They're huge. I mean, they're like the size of a nickel. So a couple different things about these. I'm not going to go into de detoxification in depth. I have a really detailed blog post that is going to have a lot more information, so I don't want to drone on here. Just know that these are legumes. They are safe to eat. They are a traditional food. Uh, you do want to cook them. You have to cook them. Uh, lupin beans are toxic when they're raw, and those are also a traditional food. Cinnamon, nutmeg, those things we commonly eat, they have toxic thresholds too. So do not listen to online resources that say that this plant is poisonous or that this is going to kill you somehow. Uh, any instance of poisoning that you're going to see online, at least that I've seen, is dealing with ruminants. And they're probably drinking water where the pods have infused to it uh, in their raw state. They're not, no one is talking about these being toxic after they're cooked because they're not. And I can tell you that because 
I have eaten these in increasing quantity for the last week and I've eaten probably about a good pound of them, which is far more than someone is going to eat in a sitting. So what you do is you boil them and they take a while to cook and what you're gonna have is something like this, depending on how long you cook them. If you cook them for about 15 minutes, which is fine, but I'd recommend that for your second, about your second or third time eating them. If you peel them, you are going to have these. So these are cooked for 15 minutes and they're still green. So that's pretty darn cool. And they're soft and tender and you can eat them basically like a fava bean. And this is after removing the outside shell after cooking. You do not have to do that, but this is going to be the closest uh, way to replicate the taste of a fresh bean is by boiling them and then peeling off the shell. And when you're cutting into them, you can kind of, to make it easier to peel, you can kind of make sure to get your knife in there and make sure that you're cutting into the beans like I'm doing here. You want to be careful so you don't cut your palm, obviously. But if you go in a little bit deep with the knife, you're going to slit the bean skins and that's going to help them pop out. Now, the other way that you can cook them is by cooking them for an extended period of time. You see how soft that is? This is beans that have been cooked for about 45 minutes. And this Kentucky coffee bean, this is tender and you can eat the entire thing. And it's pretty darn good. So if you cook them for like 45 minutes, you can eat the entire unripe shell and the unripe bean inside. And it's just delicious. It tastes a little bit like milkweed. If you've had milkweed, uh, a little bit leguminous, there's a little bit of a sweetness to it. They're really fun. I think that my favorite thing I've done is just having them cooked, uh, soaked in a little bit of brine and they taste almost like vegetal olives or you can just serve them in a little bit of oil alongside some olives or like Italian style how they have fava beans with chunks of pecorino cheese is just wonderful. Obviously you could shell these and then use them any way you would peas or fava beans uh, but it takes a little bit of work so it kind of depends on you know how hardcore you want to go. If you just want to shut the pods and boil them for like 45 minutes, 30, 45 minutes and then just eat them, you can do that. So anyway, lots more to come on these, but truly one of the coolest wild legumes that I've eaten, unripe Kentucky coffee beans. You need to try them if you're a forager, if you like wild food. Um, so get out there and find yourself a tree. One thing I will add on finding the trees, Kentucky coffee trees are typically, they're not found in the wild too much anymore. Uh, at least from what I can see and from what I've read, especially Sam Thayer's book is a great essay on them, Incredible Wild Edibles, his latest book. So if you find them in the wild, they're probably going to be along a river and they're probably going to be gigantic, enormous trees. These, are, these grow to be very, very large. Remember, dinosaurs are eating from the top of them. But luckily enough, the Kentucky coffee tree is pretty disease resistant. So a lot of uh, towns, especially where I roam around the Twin Cities in Minnesota, they are planting them in large, relatively large amounts on boulevards, in parks, and they are all over the place. And those are the trees that you want to get to because when, because you can actually reach the pods. If you find mature trees, there is no way that you will able, be able to reach a single pod. But if you find young trees, say 10, 12 feet tall, those are the ones where you're going to be able to reach to the top or uh, like the middle of the branches and you're going to be able, you can get a good amount of pods. Um, it is possible to get large amounts of these if you have the right trees around you. So go out, find some Kentucky coffee beans when they're green and enjoy.